Hi, I'm Corlendos, your ACT tutor for the Plane and Coordinate Geometry Unit. You've probably used the Map app on your phone to figure out how far you are from where your friends are hanging out. Maybe you've even used it to pick a convenient midpoint. Coordinate geometry is kind of like an old school version of that. It's used to plot points on a plane so that we can understand their relative positions. In this lesson, we'll go over using the coordinate plane and distance formula to find out how far two points are from one another. So let's get started with a brief review of the coordinate plane. Our xy plane is defined by a horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis that meet at the point 0, 0, which is also called the origin. To the left of the origin, our x values are negative, and to the right of the origin, they're positive. Above the origin, our y values are positive, and below the origin, our y values are negative. Let's start by looking at coordinate point 2, 4. The first value in a coordinate pair always tells us how far to the left or right our point is, and our second value always tells us how far up or down it is. So 2, 4 is 2 units to the right and 4 units up from the origin. The ACT may ask you to find the distance between two points. There are two ways of doing this. You can draw a right triangle to find the distance, or you can use the distance formula. Let's try the distance formula. We start with two points, which are referred to as x1, y1, and x2, y2. The distance between these points is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now that we know the distance formula, let's use it on an ACT question that involves a circle drawn on the coordinate plane. In the xy coordinate plane, a circle is centered at the point 2, 5. If the point 4, 9 is on the circumference of this circle, then which of the following distances is the radius? As usual, let's underline our facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Our answer choices represent the distance of the radius. Let's draw a picture by graphing 2, 5 and 4, 9. Now we'll draw our circle and the radius, which is just the distance from the center to any point on the circumference. To find the radius of our circle, all we have to do is find the distance between our two points. Let's label our two points so that x1, y1 is 2, 5, and x2, y2 is 4, 9. Now we're ready for the distance formula. Distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. When we plug in our numbers, we get the square root of 4 minus 2 squared plus 9 minus 5 squared, which is the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared, or the square root of 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 20. Plug the square root of 20 into your calculator, and you get about 4.472, which doesn't look like any of our answer choices. We can eliminate any choices that are integers because we know that our answer is not a whole number. So get rid of a and b. Let's plug in c, or 2 times the square root of 5, into the calculator. And look at that. It matches. We've got our answer, choice C. Another problem type that's common on the ACT is the midpoint problem. This type of problem gives you two points and asks you to find a midpoint. It can also give you one endpoint and a midpoint and ask you to find the other endpoint. Let's look at the formula for a midpoint problem. To find the x-coordinate of the midpoint, just average the two points' x-coordinates by adding x1 and x2 and dividing them by 2. Then find the y-coordinate of the midpoint by doing the same thing. Add y1 plus y2 and divide it by 2. So the midpoint is equal to the point x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Now you know how to find the midpoint, which is kind of like the best meeting spot between your friend's house and your house, but on the coordinate plane. Let's apply this to an ACT problem. In the standard xy coordinate plane, what are the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment connecting 2, 7, and 5, 7? We'll underline the facts, circle the key terms, and label the answer choices, which represent the midpoint. Let's say that x1, y1 is 2, 7, and x2, y2 is 5, 7. Now use the midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, and we get 2 plus 5 over 2, 7 plus 7 over 2. This adds up to 7 over 2, 14 over 2, or 3.57. And when we look at our answer choices, this matches choice B. Now that we've used this formula to find a midpoint, we can use this same formula to find an endpoint. In the standard xy coordinate plane, the midpoint of a line segment is at 0.52. 
If one endpoint is at negative 1, 1, what are the coordinates of the other endpoint? Let's underline our facts, circle our keywords, and label our answer choices. The answer choices represent the other endpoint. We can use our midpoint formula to solve this one as well, but we need to break it up. Instead of our normal midpoint formula, let's say that we have two equations and that midpoint x equals x1 plus x2 over 2 and midpoint y equals y1 plus y2 over 2. If we plug in 0.5 for midpoint x and negative 1 for x1, the first equation becomes 0.5 equals negative 1 plus x2 over 2. We can solve for x2 by multiplying both sides by 2 and then adding 1 to both sides to find that the x-coordinate of our endpoint is 2. Let's see if we can eliminate any answer choices. You can cross out a, b, and e because they don't have an x-value of 2, leaving us with answers c and d. Now let's solve for y. Midpoint y equals y1 plus y2 over 2 becomes 2 equals 1 plus y2 over 2. And if we solve for y2 by multiplying by 2 and subtracting 1, we find that y2 equals 3, which means that our answer is 2, 3. So let's circle choice C. Unfortunately, there's no app to find the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. And even if there was, the ACT probably wouldn't let you use it. In this case, we use the midpoint formula to find the endpoint coordinates. But you may prefer to use your answer choices to back solve instead of going straight for the midpoint or distance formula. Remember, either way works as long as you're careful doing your calculations. Now make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course.